Mass this morning is being offered for Jennifer Clerghorn on her birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who called the priest St. Charbel Marcoluf to the solitary combat of the desert and imbued him with all manner of devotion, grant us, we pray, that being made imitators of the Lord's passion, we may merit to be co-heirs of his kingdom, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Return, rebellious children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will take you, one from a city, two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. I will appoint over you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. When you multiply and become fruitful in the land, says the Lord. Then will in those days no longer say, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. They will no longer think of it or remember it or miss it or make another. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the Lord's throne. There all nations will be gathered together to honor the name of the Lord at Jerusalem. And they will walk no longer in their hard-hearted wickedness. The word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, he who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings, the grain, the, the wine, and the oil, the sheep and the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
Jesus said to his disciples, hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But it has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Today in the Gospel is one of the rare occasions where Jesus takes the time to explain a parable. Often he will convey a parable, a story, and he will let his listeners try to piece it together to figure it out. But here the Lord makes it explicitly clear as to what the parable of the sower is all about. And of course, as we can understand here, the sower is the word of God, the one who plants that word. And the soil is the key part of the story that shows how successful those seeds will grow. The soil are the hearts of those who receive the word of God. So it's important for us to understand what can the soil contain, how ought the soil be prepared, how ought the soil be cared for, in order for the seed to fully grow. So how can we prepare our hearts to better listen to the word of God, to better recognize the presence of God around us so that we can stand firm and grow into the type of people that the Lord wants us to be? People who rejoice in knowing that we are beloved sons and daughters of a loving God people who participate in the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. And I think that in the Catholic Christian tradition, we can look at our monastic tradition as a way to best understand how to tend to the soil to prepare our hearts. Within the monastic tradition, there are four components of how to live a balanced life. Work, prayer, study, and rest. And today we celebrate a saint who was a hermit, a saint from Lebanon, lived in the 1800s. Saint Charbel retreated from the world in order to better receive the Word of God and live it so that he could become who God wanted him to be. So today, as we go about our day, and especially as we've spent so much time at home over the last four months, perhaps we could better reflect upon how balanced of a day are we living? Are we, are we devoting enough time to prayer? Are we working in a way that brings joy to ourselves and rejoices in what our capabilities are? Are we able to read, to study, to learn things? And of course, are we able to rest? because it's through all four of these components that we are able to tend the soil of our heart to be able to listen to the word of God coming to us today, to see his presence, and to be able to affirm who we are in and through Jesus Christ, a beloved son and daughter of a loving father. May God bless you all.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made for the salvation of your people, so that through the intercession of blessed Saint Charbel, we may flee the enticements of sin and draw near to the company of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as on the festival of St. Charbel, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy to enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant our request, we pray, O Lord our God, that defended by the protection of blessed Charbel, we may live by this sacrament of your wisdom in serenity and moderation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.